Hey everybody, welcome on in to Clay Share Day. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips and we have a really fun demo and Q&A session on how to mix glazes with Clayscapes glaze. And Drew Seymour is gonna be joining us from Clayscapes. And he's gonna show you how to mix glazes. He's gonna talk about the thickness of it, specific gravity, all that stuff and using the glaze and show you some glaze examples. Now we've done a lot of glazing, you know, I love clayscapes, I love clayscapes glazes. Not just because they make my own line of glazes, but because they're a really great family owned company and they have been working with us for almost since we started Clay Show. They came on in the first year. And so we're really happy to have them joining us for our fifth birthday. So let's go on over to Drew Seymour at Clayscapes and see what he's got going in those buckets that I see. Hey, Drew. Hey, Drew. Thanks for joining us for the Clay Share birthday. I am. Happy birthday. Thank I'm you. I'm pretty thank excited. You. <laughs> we're so excited to have you here. Today, we're going to be mixing up uh, some glaze. I just so happen to need more nutmeg in the studio. And so we're going to be mixing up nutmeg and I'm going to show you guys what we do here in the studio um, for mixing glazes. It's going to help reduce dust and things like that. And then I'll show you the specific gravity and everything. Um, so we're just going to get right into it so that we can get to questions later. Um, this is the glaze. This is the nutmeg. Uh, we will be mixing up. And that is one of the ones that you can get here at Clayscapes, one of Jessica's. And, and it they, is food safe and dinnerware safe. Just yes, so folks know. it is. Um, <clears throat> your glazes come in five and 10 pound boxes. They come in these nice package boxes here. And we're just gonna open this one up right from scratch. And in each box is your bag of glaze. Now we do have mixing instructions online on the website, but for me, I like to start right in the bag. And so this is gonna be our dust reduction technique. I'm gonna open my bag with my powder in it right here. And I'm going to take the bag. I'm gonna go back to the sink. I'm gonna wrap the bag around the sink. You can see it, I'm looking at my thing that came out of the And now I'm gonna turn the water on and let it fill up a bit, okay? That's about it. And now I've got this chunky bag full of water, like goo, right? And I just make sure I'm holding it nice and closed and I take my offhand and kind of just mix it up inside the bag here. And that is gonna eliminate all of our dust so that when we go to put it in the bucket, instead of pouring water into a bucket full of powder, getting this big cloud of dust, I just got this in here. And you can see, I'll pull it out. So I already had a question about the water you're using, you're not using distilled, you're using tap water. We are using tap water. This is, uh, we're on city water. And so we don't have to worry as much. We don't have to worry as much about organics and things like that in the water. Um, if you're on well water, um, you're more likely to have sulfates and carbides, carbon iron. Carbides, things like carbon. Carbon. Hard in there, his things. Organic materials, things like that. And you're organic water. materials. So you can you can use distilled water, um, especially if you don't have access to like a really good source of water, uh, clean water. Um, the other thing you can, the other thing you run into is it's chlorides. That's what it is. Um, when you're on well water, if you have a, a water softener, um, that can affect your glaze as well. So that's why I'm using this. Um, in this bag, I just added a little bit more water. This is kind of the consistency we're looking for. Right? It's like 
solid. It's not, it's not a liquid yet, it's, but it's all wet. That way, when we move to dump it into our bucket, we don't get this big puff of smoke. So you didn't measure out your water. You just started adding water until it turned to basically a muck to mud. Yeah, until, until I get to the consistency that I'm looking for. And then I'll add this bucket. I'll add this bag to the bucket. It just goes in. It's pretty thick, so I'm going to like squeeze it out like an icing bag. Squeeze it out. And then we have kind of this leftover material in here. So I'm just going to kind of go run this under the sink again real quick. Shake it up. Get all the stuff off the sides. Add that into my bucket. And then this is where we're gonna add more water, but this way is a little bit messy, but we've eliminated all that smoke, smoky, powdery, airborne dust that we don't wanna breathe. You know, I don't have a, uh, I'm not having to wear a mask, anything like that. Start. Now, the bucket, we need more water. Um, let's see. I don't have so you you guys can see, you know that mud ball, right? So now I'm going to add more water to get it up to um, more of like a thick pudding consistency, and then we're going to sieve it. So uh, I just put it in here and turn the water on, and we'll come back when it's to the right consistency. So. So wait for Drew to come back and I'll ask him this question. Um, Sorry, go ahead. So Drew, for a five pound bag of glaze, what size bucket would you use? And the same sure. thing for a 10 pound bag of dry glaze. So the glaze that I just put in here was 10 pounds. Um, I am basically, I wonder if I can get up here on the table, push you down. I didn't clean my hand first. So for the five pound bag, you can use a two to three one, gallon. Yeah, a bucket. one to two yeah. gallon bucket for five pounds. So five pounds yeah. is going to be about a, a gallon. 10 pounds, about two and a half gallons. So let's look inside. Can you guys see inside right, your now? Your computer is going to love you mixing glaze right up. Oh, there. yeah. So basically, <laughs> I'm just mixing this up. You can see I've got all this muck in here. It doesn't need to be fully mixed because what we're going to do is I'm just going to push this through a sieve, okay? Um, if you've got a drill mixer at home, um, normally what I would do is I would hit this with the drill mixer, um, but I don't want to be loud, so. Oh, we and, can dampen the sound. And ruin everybody's we have that capability. So I'm just gonna, just gonna do you it. You do it your way, Drew. What's that? You do it your way. <laughs> um, and so now that I have that, mixed up to a relatively loose consistency. I'm gonna take my sieve. I'm gonna put it on the five gallon bucket of nutmeg here that's already existing. I'm gonna put a, just learned this today. Uh, I'm gonna put uh, something in the side here of the sieve to allow air to go in. And it's going to just go. In. And then we're just going to dump it in. And there it goes. Yum. And then I'm just going to put it through the screen. And so I'm just uh, rubbing the screen with my hand in here and it just will go down nice and slow. So would you sieve both dip and pour and brushable glazes? Like no matter how you're applying it, if it's one you have to mix up yourself. You yeah, typically it. I would sieve it. If I have to, if I use a drill on it, I typically don't sieve it afterwards. And so this is going to go through and then I will probably sit here for the next half an hour pushing this through this screen. So I'm happy so to answer. That, that'll be fun. So I'm going to go and say something in contradiction of Drew. I always sieve 
my glazes even after I mix it with a drill first yep. and sieve it. You know, you sometimes will use a glaze and after you fire it, you'll find these hard little bumps, little granules or something on the mm -hmm. surface. And that's from material that you would have sieved out and that wouldn't have been a problem or it would have broke down and gone to the sieve and would have been smaller. So it's up to you. Um, I recommend in all my glazing tutorials to sieve everything. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's a personal preference and uh, right. Drew is going to be there for a while. I am. Yeah. Yeah. And so what I'll do is when this goes down, um, I will add more water to it. And then we'll have this nice big bucket of nutmeg. You can hear it going through. And I'm basically just massaging the screen with my bare hand. Um, that I don't usually like to use a tool or anything. Every once in a while, I'll lift the screen up and kind of wipe off the, the bottom and I can show you that. I'm making a huge mess, but. And if you're like me and you find the screens can be a little abrasive on your hands, I do wear uh, gloves just like um, dishwashing gloves that you can get basically everywhere. And that helps prevent uh, the abrasions or roughness on my hands from just pressing against the screen. Also, I like to use a vegetable scrubbing brush. I don't know if Drew you even do. knows what that is, but All it's a brush of... for, and <laughs> you, just, you just use it to, it must, it must vegetables. <laughs> Um, yeah, we have all sorts of stuff like that. I really, I really like just using my hand. But well, you just want to play in the in the glaze, I, I guess. Do. It's my yeah. it's my uh, my time to get muddy, and this is already going down. Um, I'll wind up put, again putting some more water in on top, and that'll help it go a lot faster. But once we've sieved it, oh, it's stuck. Ooh. We'll put this to the side so we can talk about specific gravity. Everybody wants to talk about specific gravity. I know. So specific gravity, I like to think of specific gravity as a tool instead of a standard. Um, and what, what I mean by that is when you mix your glaze up, it's not like there's a correct specific gravity. Um, specific gravity is a way for you to mix your glaze as I'm just looking away. Specific gravity is a way for you to mix your glaze to the same consistency every time. And so that means we have a target number of uh, this glaze, nutmeg, I believe is 145. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is, I've got my graduated cylinder and I'm going to fill it with glaze, okay? Fill it up with glaze. Mm. A little too full. Okay. Now this is up to here. And so now what we do, get the hydrometer. Hands with the hydrometer. You want your hands to be dry. Because if you get any moisture on the outside of the hydrometer, you could cause it to have an errant reading. Now, the hydrometer is this nice glass tube. It has a couple of different scales on it. So you can see the numbers there, and you can see the numbers there, hopefully. Um, and what we're aiming for is a 1.45, which is right here on this. And how this works is when we put this into the glaze, it's gonna float at a certain level, depending on how much water is in it. If you put it in really thick mud, it's gonna be really thick. It's not gonna go anywhere. If you put it in water, it'll sink up to the top here. So this is a little thick. When I pull it out, you can see that we're flowed. You know, you can you can read. Where is my? I don't know if that's in. But you can see it's at one point six five almost. One point six five means we need more water. So what we do, we Dump it back in. 
we get some water. And we add it to our glaze. Through what mesh sieve are you using to sieve that glaze? Is it I'm an 80? 80 mesh sieve. So the 80. finer the mesh, the better. The bigger the number. Yeah, the 80 right. is the standard, but. You can use 60, and I know some people that use 40. There are some glaze ingredients that are super, super fine. 40 is just not going to cut it. It's, no, it's not. And so what I'm doing is I'm going to put the water on top. You should just use a kitchen strainer then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm going to add water by, I need to put water in the sieve anyways. So this is going to help me sieve it through faster. And there we go. Um, yeah, does anybody have any questions while I sit here? And yeah, how big is your graduated cylinder? This graduated cylinder goes up to 250 milliliters. I use it almost every day. Um, when I'm doing test glazing and things like that, you know, for developing new glazes, um, I want to make sure that, you know, I do a hundred gram batch of glaze, that that is going to be, I measure the water no matter what. And so for a hundred grams of glaze, I use 70 milliliters of water and then I can add if I need to. So, so do you sell that hydrometer, do you sell that um, graduated yeah. cylinder? We do. Yeah. We sell, so we yeah. have the hydrometers, the graduate cylinders, um, the jiffy mixers, if that's something you want, all that good stuff we sell. Ah, so, so here's an interesting question. This person's heard that hydrometers are the best way to do it. They've also heard that weighing is the better way or the best way to do it. What do you think? Difference of opinions on which way is the best way to get your specific gravity. Right, so they are both, they both do the same thing. I find that a hydrometer is a lot quicker because you don't have to like, you know, I'm not picking up a bucket of whatever and moving it around uh, and weighing it and all that stuff. Um, I like the hydrometer because you can just put it in there and it will give you a reading. Let's check it again. Cool. And in order to check it again, I have to wash everything because again, you don't want to touch it while it's wet. We don't want the hydrometer to be dirty or wet. So we do this and then we dry it off and we do it again. Let's see what changes. <laughs> Sorry, someone said they're really glad they don't have to clean up after you. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. You can't see the table. <laughs> I wouldn't see your computer. That's what I'm worried about. I will say, I will say <laughs> I'm a little messier than normal right now. So I do my glaze mixing outside because I am a train wreck when I mix glazes. They're not going to lie. All right. So we're going to try this again. We're gonna, I'm, I'm right at one seven and I'm gonna let go gently, 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 gently. And it's gonna sink and it's gonna sink and it's gonna sink. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're just over. It's almost perfect actually. We pull it out and I'll show you the scale. It is at one, four, five. So that's, you know, we're done. Ta-da, please. Yeah. Uh, and so. So why don't you just put the bucket, uh, the hydrometer in the bucket? Of if, I have enough blades, if I put the hydrometer in the bucket, let me show you. It only goes to. We don't have enough glaze. There's not in enough there. glaze in the bucket mm. to do it. If this bucket was full to the top, we could do that. Um, there's also a smaller hydrometer you can get. So you could just put it in the bucket. Um, Ooh, so 
back to the weighing versus hydrometer reading. So Clayscape's cream hydrometer reading at 120, weighing it out got 141. Which one is right? Cream should be 155. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so they're both they're both wrong. So uh, I, you know, I will say that depending on the hydrometer you get, it has a different reading. There's balm hydrometers, B A U M, and there's what is this one? I think this is a bomb hydrometer. Specific gravity and bomb heavy temperature. So there's a different type of hydrometer that people use for say making beer or spirits, things like that. Um, it's the wrong hydrometer. It will not give you the right reading. So different, there are different hydrometers depending on what you're doing. And so I would definitely make sure that it's the right type of hydrometer first. Um, and then this bomb hydrometer, like I said, it's got a scale from zero to 70 and it has a scale from one to two. And so depending on what you're looking at, you know, 1.45 and 45 don't necessarily match up, you know, 1.2 and 20 don't match up. So you have to make sure you have to pay close attention to the scale that you're measuring it on and whether or not it's the proper hydrometer. Um, from a weighing it point of view, doing the math, it, that's going to be, it just depends on how well you do the math, right? Um, I like the hydrometers. And we like the hydrometers because we have 60 buckets of glaze here in the studio and to pick each bucket up and move it and bring it to the scale, which, you know, we, we're just not set up for that. The hydrometer is quicker for, you know, going through and doing multiple buckets. Um, but, you know, if you've got the time and you don't have a hydrometer or a graduated cylinder, you got a scale, it's doable. Um, I typically, let, so when I say uh, earlier on, I said that I like to use uh, specific gravity as a tool. That's because here in our studio, we mix the nutmeg to 145. Um, you may find that you like the nutmeg a little thicker and that it performs better for you under a different circumstance. And so the hydrometer lets you say, okay, well, I know I want it thicker, so we'll mix it to 155. And then I can make sure it's the same every time I use it. Um, so when you come back, you can make sure it's 155. There's some leeway in there, right? So you don't have to be just like cones, um, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be like a perfect bullseye every time, right? Like we just want to get you really close to the mark, um, and worry less about milliliters of water and worry more about application and, um, you know, making sure that you're working with the glaze. So folks are asking the hydrometer reading on a bunch of different glazes. They can find that information on Clayscapes. All on the website. Yeah, so if you go to clayscapepottery.com. Um, and if you're having more troubles with glazes, uh, you know, really detailed uh, issues, you can always email Andrew at clayscapepottery.com. That's Drew's email. So he can help you because there, there's, you know, just like with everything, there's always little discrepancies and things that can come up when you're mixing a glaze. Um, and I don't even use a hydrometer when I mix my glazes. So there's yeah, that. It just messes everything up, doesn't it? You know, in our studio, we use the hydrometer. Um, yeah, you but, got a, you're got a different situation. But for the most part, you know, I can stick my hand in a glaze and tell, you know, just like you, if you've been doing it long enough, you can stick your hand in and go, mm, that's a little thick. Um, and so it's just, a, that's all just practice. Yeah, and folks are asking all the information for uh, Clayscapes glazes hydro specific gravity readings are on their website. And each glaze, I mean, they are in a range. They're very similar and they're very yeah, close. They're a range. Yeah, and each one's a little different. Um, yeah. So, can altitude affect your reading? Yes, altitude can affect. I found out recently that it also will affect um, cone. So if you are if you are preheating a kiln to 200 degrees um, at sea level 
and you are preheating a kiln at 200 degrees at a thousand feet above sea level, water boils at different temperatures there. And so, yes, I would, uh, I would probably need to double check. Like I would have to research that, but I would be willing to bet that specific gravity is affected by, because, it's a, because it has to do with gravity, right? And so the further away from sea level you get, I would imagine the specific gravity would change. Yeah, I mean, if we go to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> it's the end of a long day and it is the cliche birthday so it is. Uh, this is why drew is the last guest we're having today because because <laughs> he can uh put up with me um so i see so many <laughs> it's so messy they're saying it's very um, messy um, are you gonna sip the rest of that glaze he's working on it yeah he's welcome to, to the to pottery with drew it. It's messy. <laughs> Kathleen never checks, but she lives in Iowa. Kathleen, I hear you. I live in Vermont. Uh, we don't check either. <laughs> it's, we do whatever we want here. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I think specific gravity is a really good thing when you're starting mixing your own clays because it will, it will teach you a target number. Although when I was learning my professor, we didn't do specific gravity either. When I right. was a student hand test. eons ago, we did the fingernail test which isn't that scientific. No, not at all, but it always works. Pretty freaking accurate though. <laughs> it's very accurate. It, it always works. And the thing is over time, you get to know your glazes. And some glazes like to be thinner. Some glazes like to be thicker. Also, depending on what you want for an effect with the glaze, you might want it thinner, you might want it thicker. And that just comes with using. So my suggestion for folks is use, do a lot of glazing <laughs> and get to know your glaze. Yeah. Nutmeg is a nutmeg is a really good one for this example because it even it's if very it's too, forgiving. Yeah, it's very forgiving. Even if it's even if it's on the thinner side, because it is a because it is a chino, it will you can always add another layer of glaze and it really interacts well with texture when it's thin. So so about brushing glazes, the specific gravity will be different on a brushing glaze than a dipping glaze because it's a thicker glaze. So you're going to yeah. have a higher number. Yeah, I would realistically, a brushing glaze, specific gravity is going to play very little role because it's going to have to be so thick that like there's not a, it wouldn't, there wouldn't be a measurement on a hydrometer for that because they need to be really thick. So ooh, we're going, we're going quick. Oh, here's a good question. What do you do if you have an older glaze that's thickened up um, and been sitting around? Do you just add water to it to thin it back down? That's exactly what you do. Um, you can add a little bit, you know, so like if this glaze was too thin, you can add more glaze to thicken it up. Um, you know, but if it's been sitting and it had, it, it's thickened up. Typically, there's two reasons why it's done that. Either some of the water has evaporated, um, in which case you would just add more water. Um, that can be a problem depending on the ingredients in your glaze. If you have water soluble ingredients, so uh, ingredients like lithium that go into the water and never come out. You know how your buckets settle and you have the water on the top? Well, some ingredients stay in that water on the top. And if that water evaporates, it will over time, over a long period of time, it can change the glaze chemistry of your glaze. Typically though, that's not gonna be the case. It's just gonna be water has evaporated. Those materials are not in a ton of glazes. You'll just add water and you'll be good. One minute, sir. One minute, holy moly. Well, I'm it done. goes fast, right? It's, yeah. It's, no, it's, wait, no, you can go to 645. I can give you an extra 15. I was gonna kick you off early. No, no, you got 15 more minutes. You gotta stay. Okay, okay. Jessica's <laughs> done. Says we are done. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I love doing things like this, like for the clay share birthday. And we have like this marathon day of demos and tutorials. And I'm very thankful that I'm only doing one demo, which is next. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, we could end early, but then it messes up the schedule we posted. And I don't want to do that. So we're going to keep you here and we're going to ask more questions about Glee. You're going to ask me all kinds of questions because it's going to take me 15 minutes just to clean this up. Yeah. So do you ever try to be a little neater when you're mixing glaze? Yes. I get flustered when I'm on camera a little bit sometimes. And so uh, something about me that I'm very dropsy. I drop stuff all the time. I fumble a lot. I fumble with my words a lot. I, I drop things all the time. And so being on camera I'm, is nerve wracking. When I'm in like a mode where I'm like, okay, professional and you got to do this. And of course I'm going to like spill all over the table. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it's, but um, as far as being messy, like on my person, I'm always messy. Yes. Oh, you guys see the fly on my phone? Get out of there. No, it's not. I'm not showing up where I am, but I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> oh, I saw it. On so, my, so. so um, I, I want to ask you, when you're recommending glazes for folks, if they're just starting to mix their own glazes, what ones would you say like the top five, or even if you don't go as far, three are the easiest ones to use, would you say? So... From like mixing my, it up, if you got it a little thin or a little thick, it'll still be very forgiving. Yeah. And works good on all different clays. Well, cream is always going to be one of those glazes. I love the cream. It's a great liner glaze. It works with every glaze I've done with it so far. It has done wonders with. Um, nutmeg is definitely my new favorite. Um, yeah. I, work in, I work with red clay and I am doing a lot of texture right now. And so the nutmeg really shows that off and the texture and the red clay really show off the nutmeg. So it kind of, they kind of go well together. Um, Starry Night is really a really solid glaze. Um, and then, uh, let's pick a blue, uh, Lake Blue or um, Pacific Blue. Um, those are both really good. Lake Blue is really solid. It's like a floating blue. Um, but it's a little more, it's not as finicky as other floating blues that I've used, like the starry, not the starry, like the Arctic or the coastal. Um, I really liked the lake blue and how it, how it works. Um, so yeah, I think those would probably be my, my top picks. So yeah. when would you add gum to a glaze? Never. Um, but if you wanted to brush, say I wanted to take this dipping glaze, and I want to turn it into a brushing glaze, right? Well, I don't use brushing glazes as much. So what I'll probably do is I'll take a small amount of it out. You know, I'll separate out a little bit of the glaze and then add the gum. Now, if you're looking to make a dipping glaze, a brushing glaze, and you already have it mixed liquid, you're going to want to add something called gum solution. It's a liquid gum that you would add to warm water, and then you would add a portion of that into the, your liquid glaze. If we go back in time 40 minutes, and I've got my dry powder here, and I'm, I haven't added water to it yet, um, that's when you would add your brushing medium. And that is the powdered gum, um, bentonite gum mix, uh, there's a few, there's like three or four ingredients. Um, you would add that to the dry powder and then you would add your water. And the reason you don't want to add dry powdered brushing medium to your liquid glaze is what will wind up happening is your brushing medium will go into your liquid and it will stick to itself and ball up. And the things that make gum and brushing medium awesome and make your glaze dry slower uh, is that they get dispersed within the mix. If it balls up, it's really, really difficult to, to get water to it because it's, it, it's, um, it's like hydrophobic almost. The, the molecules repel water, so they stick to each other and then they wind up getting hardened and you wind up with these giant balls of gum in your glaze. <laughs> So, all right. Yeah. So here's a really good question. Should I avoid rinsing glazes in my sink, like a normal bathroom or kitchen sink? 
I would. It's not, it's not the end of the world, but you, you ideally, you really want a sink trap. Um, the ingredients for glazes and things like that, um, you know, your typical house plumbing is not set up to handle. Um, and so even though there isn't necessarily anything toxic in this glaze, um, if I were to pour this down the drain, eventually over time, those really, really, really fine particles will settle in your pipes. And then they'll build up layer after layer after layer until your pipes are, you would, you can't roto rooter them. Um, it's almost like you would, it's almost like you would have a hard pan glaze in your pipes. And so the roto rooter is not going to go through it. And then you get into having to replace pipes and stuff like that. And so I just wouldn't do it. <laughs> and for safety reasons, you know, we shouldn't just put anything down the sink. Yeah, it's even not, if you buy not great. even if you're buying commercial glazes, even if you're making your own glazes and you know for a fact that there's nothing toxic in there. Um, you know, how how you know how can you trust that we know everything about we don't know everything about everything you know and so you know down the road we may go oh man this awesome ingredient that we've been using forever turns out it's linked to this and you're like oh great my pipes are full of that uh, you know so i just typically tend to say you know you err on the side of caution you should just put everything through a sink trap um you know settle it out in the buckets and and separate it and throw them out um, it's just better for everybody. Yeah. So we've got, we've still got a little bit of time. We've got, uh, eight minutes left. So oh, like brave heart. Uh, is the only thing to worry about in like tap water or well water, the organic compounds that could be in the water? Is that really the only thing you're worrying about? It's the, it's the organics. So what will happen is the base, basically what happens is, you know, if you've got well water and it's particularly high in say like sulfur or iron um, and you don't have a water softener, those ingredients, those, that's those sulfides, those iron particles, those go into your glaze. Um, and so what winds up happening is you just have more outgassing. Um, and so, you know, distilled water will help eliminate that issue. The other thing that you run into is if you're on a well and you do have a water softener, instead of those sulfides and irons and things like that, you're going to get chlorine and other things. And so that's going to affect um, your water. So it's mostly, you know, if you're on a water softener or you're on the pure well water, um, typically you want to use distilled. Although I'm going to jump in and say I'm on well water and I yeah. just use my well water. <laughs> I know this is great. I just contradict everything. Um, but the thing is my glaze will probably be different than someone using distilled water, slightly. Yeah. Yep. There'll be some slight differences and you just have to be aware of that. So it's okay to use your tap water, whether it's well or city, just realize Absolutely. that the results you get are not going to be as um, the same as someone using distilled. So it's just, you're taking that chance. I've always used tap water, um, mostly because I live in the middle of nowhere and getting <sighs> distilled water is a, like, it has to be part of a, a trip thing. somewhere. Yeah, it's a thing. It's not like it's just down the road. So yeah, um, it's one of those things where it's not, you know, when we say like, oh, you should use distilled, it's not from a safety point of view. It's not from a, um, you know, ease of use point of view. It's just from a, there are potential discrepancies, you know, and so if there's a difference between what I'm doing here and what you're doing there, that's a, that's a that point of, difference. yeah, that's a point of yeah. where, you know, oh, that's different. Um, yeah, uh, my spearmint, a friend of mine, um, she was actually a student and then became a friend of mine who lived in the same town as me, but she was on, I was on town water and she was on well water. She uh, made up my spearmint and she could never get my spearmint to be the same as my spearmint. Like her version of it was never the same. We used the same clay, fired it even in the same kiln and her water 
changed the way the spearmint was. It just was not exactly the same as the way mine was. Yeah. So I thought that was just really interesting that you just could see it. It was it wasn't so glaringly obvious, but when you put them next to each other, it was just slightly different. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. So totally see if we have any more questions, and then we're gonna wrap it up because I gotta get ready. I'm doing a demo, and then we're giving away everything except the kitchen, <laughs> except the pottery sink. That's what we're going with um, for the. If we've got anything else, anybody. I will not wash my glazes down the drain again. Okay. Um, yeah. It's not, I mean, so if you have a little bit of glaze on your hand and you go inside and you wash your hands off, you know, like there's a smear of it on your hand. You didn't realize it that you didn't get off. That's okay. Like yeah. a tiny bit once in a while, but you definitely don't want to wash out your stuff. I keep five gallon buckets of water in the studio and I just wash everything off in those because I don't have running water, yep. which, um, and so this person's city water is high in chlorine. So that could be a consideration, right? If you have right. a so lot of chlorine. Running, and so it's not its not the end of the world. It's high in chlorine. So when you get your results out of the kiln, if you're, you know, if you're happy, number one, none of it matters as long as you get good results. So if you're getting good results, but you're worried because you think you need to do distilled water, don't worry about it. You're getting good results. Done, right? So, you know, but know that if you're saying, huh, this isn't coming out the way I think it should come out. This is, you know, something is off here. Um, you know, these are the things that we consider. And I know we talked, you and I briefly, about the uh, situation that's been going on in the pottery world that's uh, affecting mm -hmm. a lot of us because of supply chain issues and how they're not getting better. In fact, it looks like many of them are going to probably get worse and how you know, every week there's more materials that are not available. We were going to talk about that and I, we won't have time tonight, but you were thinking of coming next week to do a live Q and a session with us and talk yeah, about that's, uh, absolutely. that because I think that's something folks don't know. There's a big shift in what's going on in pottery supply. And um, it used to be, you know, there was plenty for us like ceramic artists and hobby potters. But now a lot of mines are actually closing, not because they don't have the material, but they're actually selling it to the industrial side and yes. they're not selling it to us anymore. So the materials are still there, but we can't get them, which that's causing a ripple effect <laughs> through everything. So I think we should talk about that um, yeah. next week. If you want to come join us, we'd love to have you on next Wednesday. Yeah, you want to come absolutely. in for the live at five and we can do that. And that well, would be, I think it's really important. And timely you're not and plus what time do you get out of work i mean if you have to stay past five i get you out of work early i can write a note to your dad i you have to five. leave work for five no, you <laughs> <laughs> are you sure i can get you out <laughs> all right so i just want to let everybody know that if you use the explore 10 you can save 10 percent off on clay scapes glazes the dippable and the brushable you can also save on mako speedball Amico, MKM Tools, yeah. Kemper Tools. Am I forgetting any? What else? Tell me. The Kemper Tools are thirty percent off. The Kempers are thirty. Uh, so those don't get the Explore Ten, but the Sim Tools, the, the Garrity Sim Tools, tools the, the um, again Mako Speedball, Amico, Clayscapes, um, all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of people who, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff, so go check that out. You have plenty of clayscapes glazes in stock, though, so there's no Correct. issues currently. Correct. So if anybody wants any clayscapes glazes, you got it. You can get those. We just um, made Other companies are way behind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so, so there's nutmeg, if anybody oh, wants it's, nutmeg. It's, uh, yeah. it's there. All right, Drew, thank you so much. You need to hose off. I want to run my hands through my hair right now so bad. Yeah, no, don't do that. <laughs> no, don't listen to Kevin. He's saying do it. No, not do that. All right. Thank you, Drew, for joining us here for Clay Share Birthday. Oh, come on. Oh, it's like children. Okay. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> we'll talk later. All right.
Thank you, Drew, for that fun and informative. Yes, we got a lot of good information out of that session on mixing Clayscapes glazes. And uh, be sure to follow us in Clayscapes Pottery because Drew's going to come back next week and we're going to talk about these supply chain issues that are just not going away. And they are changing. And there's a lot of factors causing this, um, not just the, the, you know, not just demand, but there's, there's a lot of things going on. And I think it's good for us to discuss and explore this. All right, use Explore 10 save on products at Clayscapes. Yes, yes, yes. And they are doing tonight's giveaway as well. And Clayscapes is doing, doing four $50 gift certificates. The list keeps getting longer. Everybody just keeps calling me up and wanting to give away more stuff. <laughs> I'm not complaining. Um, I wanted to show this before we left, how nutmeg is so versatile. This is nutmeg. Here it is on the Tucker's Clay Mid Smooth Stone Spec. And here it is on Laguna B-Mix, except I put an iron wash on first. And so the iron wash changed the way the nutmeg looks, at, looks on there. So that iron underneath really makes it warmer. And this one right here is just B-Mix by itself. So, and these were brushed on thinly, but Tucker's Mid Smooth Stone Spec, so this is a speckled clay. I don't, yeah, I got a little smudge on there but I don't think you can tell from the lighting in here. And then this is B-Mix. So they look the same, except this one has speckles. And look at the difference though. The speckles here make it warmer. So it depends what clay you're using. It totally changes the effect of the glaze. Or what you put on underneath, like I did with the iron on this one. Okay, now we're, oh yeah, and Clayscape sells Tucker's Mid Smooth Stone Spec. So I just wanna make sure I put that out there as well. Okay, we're gonna take a little break. We'll be back at seven o'clock and I'm going to do a little demo. We're gonna use some of the Clayscapes rim templates and we have a new rim template available today. All of our rim downloadable rim templates are 33% off for everyone. Extra discount for premium members on top of that too. So you guys really save. But I'm gonna show you how to use them, not with the ones I cut on my laser machine, but with the craft foam ones that everybody can make easy peasy at home and they just download the template and oh yeah i'll be using the new scandy birds and daisy rolling pins all right 